Good morning, February 22nd, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology. And I, today is day number 9 in the week number 5. So let's get started. Welcome back. Actually, it should be working, yes. So, um, today is day number 9 into the semester, and it's week number 5. And if you look at the Moodle environment, the theme for this week, as well as the next two weeks, is self-regulated learning, SRL. In other words, we have passed the milestone of inquiry-based learning. So it's very important that before we proceed into SRL, let's take a good look at what we did in the first four weeks of the semester. Okay, so let's come back to the beginning. Okay, at the very beginning, here, we have a learner center syllabus. This is the course of web technology at night. Let's go back to the learner center syllabus. And in this syllabus, what we're interested in is to look at the schedule. All right, the schedule, the very brief schedule here. So let's take a look at the schedule. Today is day number nine. In other words, we have actually passed through one, two, three blocks. Okay, let's take a look at what we did. We should have done the induction for this particular course in week number one. In this period, we try to understand your background and give you some sense of what this course is all about. So based on the syllabus, it tells you a little bit about the whole grade intended learning outcomes in general education. The course learning objective of this course, which include three, as well as six intended course learning outcomes. Okay? So, and we tell you, in this course, we're going to help to learn to learn, and this is a big challenge for the teacher, because in a matter of less than four months' time, I need to help you to complete, where to say, to start with the transition from being a taught to learn student, being you need a teacher to tell you what to do to being a learn to learn student that you can become your own teacher. So the big challenge is, as I told you from the very beginning of the semester, it's going to be a little bit different from the traditional courses that you have been taking. And I also mentioned the big challenge in this course is on PBL, common based learning, which is in your learning contract number three, three weeks later. Okay. But you did a little bit on inquiry-based learning. You got some background there. You got through some activities, which include writing your journal, which includes discussions online with your learning partner, which includes writing the report together with the help of your learning partner, which also includes a refracted blog, which you have to think about what you learned, what you did, and put it in a very concise manner, what you have learned, what happened to this? Okay. Over the first four weeks, okay, something wrong with this. Fortunately, we got this one working. So, I'm sorry for my two students over there. <clears throat> so, and after that, I invite you in the very first learning contract artifact to include one proposal is an individual proposal of what you want to do with a very simple suggested topic, questions and references, and of course, a justification of why you believe it's important. And finally, you also have to do something to submit one meeting minute, which includes a discussion detail between the two of you in your opinion, telling us a little bit about the setup of your collaborations in the past four weeks or possibly into the future. So that is what you can observe in the first learning contract. And then in the first learning contract, we also have introduced to you four important areas which are considered as the common module which you have to study no matter which GE course you're going to take under the category of information technologies and knowledge society. You have a little bit of understanding of what is meant by IT, the kind of technology which involves the use of information 
We also discuss a little bit about what is meant by technology, and in the context of London society, what uncharacteristic today's considered not society form the previous generations, which is normalized as the industrial society. Okay? And then we study a little bit about ethics, particularly on the online ethics. Uh, and then we introduce to you the idea of social responsibility, and in particular, the CSR, corporate social responsibility. And we invite you to think what you can do as an individual to do something collectively as a group, and also invite organizations like universities or other organizations in the town ID that make you see the business, what they can do for the society here. All right? And then we introduce to you the idea of digital divide. Uh, and in the, in the context of helping you to understand the digital divide in the 21st century, we also give you a simple documentary of service learning which is demonstrated by students and academic staff at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, all right? And last week, we come to the topic of information literacy, okay, and also information competency. In the context of how can you understand information literacy, we walk you through five important stages. You discover your need, you have to access the information you want, you got a lot of information, you need to evaluate the information sources, and then you discover all oh, good information for me to use well better. So use them. But before you use them, you need credit sources. So there's a kind of ethical concerns. And then we also introduced to you the process of problems of information literacy last week, called the discover process. D for define, I for inquire, S for search. C for collect, O for organize, V for verify, E for express, and R for refract. And so, by the end, we finished studying that. We discovered that, well, we are almost nearing the end of the first minute contract, and according to the syllabus, we have something to submit. We look at all of these course workers, we need to do a journal, we need to do a discussion forum, and then we need to write a report. And I'm so much encouraged by the kind of activity that happened starting from Friday, Saturday, and also last evening. I see so many activities, as you can see from the website here. All right, so we have an activity page here. You can see that the online user, and then all the kind of submissions after that, okay? Look at these, the calendar, and the latest news. Look at the latest news, who submit something? And then reason activity. All right, so uh, a lot of you ask me questions and I answer that through the hotline and I also answer through the email uh, and that's right, I send you a message this morning which is the revised message and I start with thank you very much for your effort demonstrating on people learning contract number one. A lot of you have done already good work and out of 21 students in this class for each of the items submitted, I discovered that more than 15 students submitted this. Very good, all right? So it's very good things that I can see that your class are willing to learn and trying very hard. Now the next question I want to pose to you before we come to today's lesson is, do you ask the questions, why do I need to complete so many items? Six items together in that contract number one. Why do you need to write a journal? What's the purpose behind writing a journal? What you can learn from writing a journal? Okay? Now you have to answer this question. If you do not answer this question for yourself, you're just doing with an assignment. Just like any other class, you come to class and you have an assignment to do, so I do an assignment to submit it. I do not know what's that for. And then the same question is, why do you need to engage your learning partner? in an online discussion forum for the specific topic you choose and also for the specific topic you already have to choose what skill that you're going to pick up from that alright and again why do I need to write a report when I finish writing a journal okay so when you write a report when you use the guideline to write a report compared to the guideline used to write a journal with the OIA process 
Have you asked this question? What should you have learned from the process? Okay? And there's a prof. Why do I need to write a prof? I finished writing a report. I finished producing a journal. I finished discussing it with my friend. Why do I need to write a prof? All right? So in the context of asking those legitimate questions, you might say that, well, you know, things similar, of course, all those items that I just don't understand, why do we need to waste time doing this artifacts? Okay? So you need to be convinced that so before we start today's important lessons, I need to make sure that you answer such questions to make sure that you justify the time you spend here. And also, when you ask this question, can you give us a little bit more time to do six items in one week? I just hate to do an assignment in one week's time. Right? You're crazy. Can you just make it simple for us? Because we just finished the Chinese New Year holiday. I hate doing assignments in one week with so many items. Okay. So we need to go back to what we're supposed to do. All right? So here we go. From day one of the semester, we informed you that this is a GE course, okay? The differences between a GE course and a normal disciplinary course is that in the context of GE, content is important, but it's not as much as important as the process, true, because we want to give you an opportunity to learn in a way that you can manage your learning. And so, at the very beginning, we provide you the following items, okay? These items, we expect that you at least have to peruse them by the end of the first week to understand what is being entailed in your learning in this course. And we just say consistently, take a look at the online activities, okay? So the online activity, Check out the learning of this semester, and I often say the two important activity you need to focus on in the first learning contract. The first is the, the, the journal, the second is the forum. Well, the journal is just like a notebook. It's a notebook which helps you to keep track of what you have learned, bits and pieces in the classroom during the conversations with the learning partner or any other associated forms. So it's a notebook. This notebook is supposed to be used from day one and you need to complete the notebook week after week based on your learning. You don't just forget it and so by the time you need to submit something, you just need to scrape something from your notebook and put it there. And that's why in the learning contract number one, you just got four points for the notebook. For the journal, four points. You know that, right? So it's not that something which is significantly important, but it's also very important because it's the first step. If you would like me to make an example, it's just like a reporter going out to the scenes to gather news, and so he picked up pieces of the information there and put it in the scratch paper, and then when he submit the scratch paper to the Inspector or news gathering, these are what we got. And the inspector news gathering will say, please provide them. And maybe you can talk to another reporter in the scene from other news agency to collate your information. And that's the reason for the discussion following. You start with something simple, okay? And you have nothing to lose. You only have something to gain. But what you can gain from this is a small part of the overall picture. Now, if you want to maximize the gain there, you need to negotiate your understanding of the something with someone else who's also in a similar situation. So, in the scenarios of learning in this G class, we start with doing something very simple. We give you this journal, consider it as a weekly electronic notebook for you to keep track of the bits and pieces of learning you get it in class and also from your outside the classroom reading. Now the question is, have you done enough of this? Gathering of the pieces and put it over there. This is the first question. And the second thing is, if you have actually done this, now do you know what you can gain from this? 
In this GE course, we hope to stimulate you to think critically about the topics of interest in this class. So we start with a very simple question. It's web technology making your life better. Now, have you spent some time there to pinpoint positive example, negative example, and your personal justifications to make your decisions? And then have you discussed this with your learning partner to see how your learning partner take a look at the same? All right, so these two important online activity forms the fiber of your learning activity in the first four weeks. If we include the two weeks of Chinese New Year's holiday, six weeks. So does it mean that you have to do all of this in the last week? If you have not done anything, yes. If you have been doing something, no. So the reasons why I'm telling you this because it's not to do with what you're going to do in this second early contract. Okay, having said that, it's time to come back here. Of course, you know why you need to write a report. Suppose your report during the scenes, you, you did a 30 minutes news gathering, but what are you going to do? You just have six seconds or ten seconds of news reporting and even to do that. And what's that six seconds or ten seconds of news reporting in front of the camera do? You need to back it up with an article that you need to find with your editor. The article is your report. Okay? You're in the camera, 30 to 10 seconds. It's your distillation of the process of learning. So, I love to use an example of a report of doing all of these from scratch. Okay? Do that, of course. You have not done that in front of the camera reporting yet, but if you think a little bit further, the in class participation is exactly the chance for you to use five minutes of time each class to share with your classmate what you did. Okay, and if you did already, take this chance. All right, here we go. Second learning contract. Now, first of all, you have to understand the second learning contract based on the thing called SRL is not isolated from the IBL, and actually it's built on the foundations of IBL. But on top of that, we need to inform you, SRL starts with asking a question, why are you doing all you're doing? With the time given, with the collaborations you can obtain from your learning partner. So that's how L means you become manageable as a person, particularly independent learning. Oh, by the way, that's independent learning means individual learning. It definitely includes individual learning, but mostly independent learning involve a lot of the collaborations with your learning partner because you need help. You don't study it alone. So in the specific context of SRL, we invite you, before you do anything, you think about the goals of your learning. Well, put it much more elaborately in the context of the second learning contract, think about what you need to produce at the end of the second learning contract. Now, I want to emphasize we look at the syllabus three bits only. So it starts from today and it ends on March the 12th, three bits. Okay? So what are you going to do in this three bits? Well, of course, we're going to cover the topics that's delineated in the syllabus. Look at topic one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But before you put your focus on topic, you want to make sure you understand the process. The process requires you to understand, set your goals, okay? What are you going to achieve at the end of the second learning contract? How much time do you have to do it in your second learning contract? What are the resources you got in order to make it work in your second learning contract? Resources can be divided into human resources, you and your learning partner, and if you look at it very carefully, to work at the end of the second learning contract, you have to have a team, all right? That means you need to put two pairs together. So, you have the goals, you have the timeline, you have the resources. What else do you need? You need an action plan. You need to know what to do. You need to know the tasks involved. 
You need to get those tasks completed. What if you cannot get those tasks completed? Well, you can think about this. If it is before the deadline, I could change my plan. I could modify my action steps. I could reevaluate the impact of my adjustment into my learning plan. And then I do it again. But you've got to be very time sensitive because you do not have all the time to do it. And you need to know what to do in order not to waste your time. So SRL, subway related learning, it's an important process. Each college student must learn to master. But you cannot master it at one try. That's why we need to introduce to you the idea of being a linear process and also an iterative process. Linear means you go in from step one to step N, at the end of that step N, you stop there and you believe what you did is what you did. Now in the real world, the world unfortunately, this is not the way we do things. That's why we have the word iterations. Iteration means you start from step one, you complete up to step N, you look back, if it's not done well, you go back to step one, you refine a step, it's a loop. Okay? So, basically, what you're going to learn in a second learning contract is to develop into your skill, hopefully you've already acquired or questioning into something, reporting into something, sharing into something, into the overall framework of learning, which is a very important part of the learn to learn process called SRL. Well, in the context of this teacher's message, I divided SRL into four areas of task management as a whole. With these four important points, you understand what I expect you to learn from this second learning class, right? Before we move back to the topics. First of all, it is called task analysis. You need to understand your assignment. You need to understand what type of assignment is this? What can I learn from it? What do I have to produce at the end to submit? And I can give you a very simple secret. You are going to submit a set of learning artifacts very similar, and actually very similar, to your learning contract number one. You have to submit a journal very much like learning contract number one. You need to select the topic. Okay, from the three reading lists, week five, week six, and week seven. Okay, in each reading list, you have a number of questions, and each question is considered as a topic, and you need to spend three weeks' time elaborating on this topic that you choose. You need to share the topic with your learning partner. Well, towards the end of the second learning contract, you need to share the same topic with your teammates. Hopefully, you have a team form by merging two pairs together. And then you need to engage in pair-based discussions with your learning partner, and also team-based discussions with your teammates if you have a team. You need to write a report based on that topic, okay? The report following a similar format in the first learning contract. And then you need to come up with a proposal. Oh, before the proposal, it's a blog, yes. You need to write a blog. The student your understanding of the topic um, in the second learning contract that you choose, and you need to share that topic. All right, and then you need to come up with a proposal. But this time, it's not an individual proposal, it's called a pair proposal. It's something you need to negotiate with your pair member before the two of you in your pair come up with one proposal. Last time, you can come up, come up with that with your own effort. You do not need the agreement of your learning partner because that is your topic. But this time, it's the pair's topic, two persons' topic. And then, you need to give some meeting minutes between the two of you in your pair over the three weeks time. Last time, you just need to give at least one meeting minute. This time, you need to give at least two meeting minutes. That means from one meeting minute now to two meeting minutes. All right, so it's very simple, just like what you have 
got in the first bloody contract, but in the process of doing that, your meeting minutes must include, okay, that is a technical challenge, must include your considerations of these four areas, okay? So the first area is task analysis. You analyze what your assignments have just given you and indications, and you have to determine what needs to be done. Well, you have to indicate your discussions with the learning partner and also with the teammate in the meeting minute. Particularly, the first meeting minute is a two persons meeting minute between the, the two of you in your pair, but the second meeting minute it's between the two pairs in your team. All right, so it's very interesting this time. So this includes drawing up a timeline for the completions of your work, breaking down tasks into manageable parts. You have to think about what you need to do. And then establishing goals and a framework to identify who is doing the ritual work and what do they need in order to understand what you're going to tell them. That is task analysis, area number one. Now, how are you going to bring this into meeting minutes? Now, you have to put some thought into it. Second, you need to identify resources, look at information literacy. Now, so we've done a lot of things. Have to identify what are the resources, and then you need to plan actions. What do you need to do? Okay, the two important skill area: look for resources, identifying action steps to perform. The first one is the ability to identify resources available to help you to complete the task, information literacy work that you continue to learn, including the learner's own self knowledge. And spirit. What do you have? What you don't have yet? The second is to develop a plan of action to complete the task. You got the information you need. Now, how are you going to put them together? Uh, what do you need to do to put them together? You need access, evaluate, use, and cite the sources. Okay. And then you got the resources, you got the action plan, and definitely you got the goals. Definitely you need to take actions. Who are going to do that? So in your meeting minute, you know that as I suggest, you must have some decisions made. You must have some actions to be performed by whom? Okay? So actions to be taken consisting of bringing together all the identified resources and execute them the steps in your plan. Now, you need strategies. What strategies are you going to use among the two of you in your pair and among the two pairs in your team? The strategies can help you to, to complete the learning task. In other words, achieve the goals. And the process must be, aha, continuously monitor in your team and modified by your team member. Okay. When you have to monitor the steps taken and then modify the step taken when it is not in fact what you want, means in your team of two persons or four persons, you have to install some team roles, such as the coordinator, such as the secretary, such as the liaison member, and such as a tracker to track down on the work done such as a reporter who is going to stand up to tell the whole group what we have done, and such as the timekeeper. We just don't have enough time to do all of this. All right? So when we talk about strategies, the, the four of you in your team and the two of you in your pair must be smart enough to tell the whole team, these are our goals. These are what we have to do. These is so much time we have. This is what we can do. All right? And then assessing actions. Someone who's smart enough to tell you, we really cannot take this step because it's too time consuming and we cannot come together often enough to get it done. Often time, this is done by the coordinator. Revising the plan, the secretary will tell you that we can only do this. So how are we going to do it? We just have one week left, just in your last learning contract. 
When you finish Gamada and come back on Monday, you discover the teacher's message tells you you're going to submit the following item by the end of the weekend. You just have one week left. Now you have three weeks. Okay. At the time, students should review the outcome to take a look at what we have done. Do what we have done satisfy what is required? And is it effective in a sense? Can these much work skewed for good grade? or the student only given as a passing grade. Reviewing include, you have to reflect on, ask questions again. Are we satisfied with that? The entire process to determine what a student might learn, and then what can we learn from doing all of these things, okay? Time management, self-management, teamwork, collaborations, communications, critical thinking, evaluations, a lot of things, including definitely reading, writing, and speaking. So, with an eye to improve the future work, if this is so much we can do, we can't spend any more time into it because we have other things to do. Or you take more than two, three, or seven courses, how can we spend all the time doing this assignment? So, you need to set some criteria. So, the secondary contract put all of these ingredients into your assignment and asking you to collaborate on doing something that is very similar in your first learning contract. And of course, I must tell you that, pardon me, I must tell you that uh, you have to consider what this course is all about. And so you have to come back to the, to the uh, syllabus and ask yourself those questions. The teacher said, we have three important cost objectives. So are what we are doing consistent with this three important learning objectives? Okay, you need to read the three important cost learning objectives and ask this question, all right? And do you discover that no, we are not doing anything in line with this three, we may have to talk to the teacher. Why are we doing this? Okay, and then, in the syllabus, since we have five parts in the syllabus, somewhere here in part D, and this is part C, we have the design and learning experience here. That is for learning contract number three. But before that, this is very important. Okay? Any assignment you're going to do in this course, including learning contract one, learning contract two, include motivations to help you achieve this five specific objectives. Make sure you review them. And then, part E, you have to focus on this. Okay? These are the intended learning outcomes. Six intended learning outcomes of this course. And we have to bring you to this page starting from this learning contract because now that we've gone through the first learning contract, you've got some foundation work done, we need to focus on what web technology and life is all about. Alright? So in this particular syllabus, part E tells you we have six possible course intended learning outcomes. Now, may I invite you if you have not done it from day one or the first week of the class, make sure sometime this week you come to part E and you study the six important intended learning outcomes. Okay? Now, having said that, let's go back here to our course website. First of all, let me congratulate you on getting your work done here, okay? As I just told you, more than 15 of you, per item wise, have already done the submissions. I'm going to take a look at the work submitted study from today, and you can read my responses and your score here by clicking on the suitable link. If you want to know how much you've earned for your general, click on this link and towards the end of this week, hopefully, you can see all the items here. All right, so I will do feedback and tell you what you need to do to improve your work. But today, 
We are invited to do something very important because after the completion of each learning contract, I will set a student feedback questionnaire at FQ. Okay? Towards the end of the semester, you have an overall, which is officials, but towards the end of each learning contract, invite you to do this. And actually, many of you have already done this, but as I said, I would like to make sure you are given a chance to do it in class. So may I invite you to spend 10 minutes time that you please log on to the Moodle environment, each one of you using your mobile device or your tablet, and you come to this important questionnaire, okay, which will be closed um, by 11.55 tonight. So you need to make the best use of this time to do it. Some of you have already done this. And so this questionnaire include uh, 33 questions, but very simple questions, okay? So I would like you to spend 10 minutes time now in class to complete this questionnaire. Because I must uh, uh, submit back to you the report uh, on your responses and provide my response to you uh, for any question you have. So the first questions relate what you need in the first learning contract to the GE program in head of learning outcomes of the university. So it's very simple. It asks you, do you agree your learning experience so far in this general education course has been rendered consistently with the following program in head of learning outcomes? So would you please uh, go online now uh, to the Moodle environment and go to the submission link for learning content number one and click on this student feedback questionnaire. And if you have not done this, would you please do it now? You have 10 minutes time to do this. Okay, 10 to 15 minutes is very important. Because as a teacher, I cannot talk to individual of you in a systematic manner in every class, but at the end of each major assignment, I use the questionnaire to collect feedback so that I know what the individual you are doing, and then I can adjust the learning steps, all right? So, Highly appreciate it if you take some time now to complete it. Um, at the end of that, you just need to choose a choice, and then you have fewer than five questions which ask you to write something. The rest of these, you just need to pick a choice, all right? So the second question asks you a similar question, but this time, is it consistent with the three course learning objective that we postulate in the learning syllabus, okay? So help uh, to learning and also help to improve the course of learning in this course by filling up this questionnaire. And the third uh, question asks you the specific question which has something to do with the course intended learning outcomes. Now, uh, officially speaking, we just start introducing you this in this second learning contract, but it's okay. You just use what you feel uh, to answer those questions. Yes, let me not to bore you that much on this. At the end of the 15 minutes, we'll come back to discuss today's class. Okay. I hope that I'm not going too fast, but um, I have to be very much time sensitive. We just have less than 75 minutes left.
just means we can set this off. It's tricky.
You have five more minutes. And in five more minutes, I'm going to return to today's class. I give you two more minutes because the is just very much. Do the cough and the cough over there. Okay. This music, we're going to return to class. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's already cut off. All right, so it's okay. God's sake, it's Okay, 
let's save it to a base file. And we'll fix the label. Yeah, so we can watch the music. It's excellent. Okay, time's up. Uh, I hope that if you have not finished doing it in class, you can do it before 11.55 11 tonight because the questionnaire is going to be closed by 11.55 tonight. Let's get back to class today. First of all, this is Subway Lake 30. All right. So before we introduce to you the spirit behind this, besides what I've already talked about, I want to bring your attention to this. Uh, this is week number one. Okay? In week number one through week number four, you can see that there is something called learn and practice for learning contract number one. Okay? Learn and practice for learning contract number one. If you still remember, if you still remember what I told you in day one of the semester, these link is installed for those of us who have difficulty in transitioning itself from being a taught to learn student to a learn to learn student. That means you really need a teacher to come to class to give you a lecture based on the PowerPoints or notes the teacher provides so that you can absorb material like that. So this link is very important. I would consider this as a supplementary link to what we do in class. And if you happen to forget this, I'm here to remind you one more time, because at the beginning of learning contract number three, I'll remind you one more time. If you come here, and if you've already come here, you should discover something very useful for you. Oh, you need the help of a textbook, you need the help of a teacher who can guide you step by step. You come here, you read those PowerPoints. In the first learning contract, in the four weeks time, we just have three PowerPoints for you. And indeed, those PowerPoints are very useful at the beginning of the second learning contract. If you look at the design of the learning experience in this course. Why? Because if you look at the, the syllabus here. In week number one, two, and three, and four, we just give you a brief introduction of what is web. Actually, what is web 2.0. We skip all those broad wiki photo sharing RSS and we postpone it to week number five, six, and seven. Okay, then when you go back here, this is week number one. When you click on this learning practice plane, which you can see here, all those PowerPoints, all of the results, they installed from day one for week number one, for learning contract number one. But they're exactly very suitable for your take up learning, studying in learning contract number two. So if you want to know the PowerPoint, just click on this, okay? And then what you need to do is click on download, and then have you over here, and then you can read the PowerPoint and you can learn from what the teacher has already done for you, okay? Step by step, okay? If you need this kind of help, they are there already from day one. Unfortunately, if you have not watched or read those PowerPoint, it's good time for you to study them, okay? If you need the help of a teacher, they are there, all right? So, having said that, now let's come back to week number five, okay? Week number five, we have to officially kick off the theme of self-regulated learning. Now, I've given you an introduction based on the teacher's message today, and you know that there are four specific areas of task management that I expect you to develop in yourself and also in your group member, particularly your learning partner, so that two of you can help one another. But the spirit of all of these, since we do not have much time left today, I've chosen to make sure you understand the meaning of this. All right.
give you a problem to solve in class today, and I'd like you to solve it in five minutes so that you discuss with your learning member or your table. Okay? And at the end of five minutes, you share something. Is it reflections in actions or reflections on action? You just have two choices. Refraction in actions or refractions on actions. If I give you a problem to solve with your learning partner today in, in your table, then you five minutes time to solve the problem. So at the end of the five minutes, I invite you to share what you what you have done to solve the problem. Is it refractions in action for you or refractions on actions for you? You, you pick up the idea? Now you got the question, okay? Now I play the video again and you try to tell me what the answer is. Today is day number nine, 
then we have to put it in day number 10 stock. Okay? So I think I've given you enough today to keep on self-regulated learning. I sincerely wish that you will complete the questionnaire that I introduced you to complete before 11.55 today and put some thought into what you need to do. Remember, we just have three assignments in this semester and you finished one already. That's learning contract one. When are you going to submit learning contract two? Okay, now you want to know. You want to know. Okay, uh, let's come back here on week number one. Okay, you go to our submissions link here and you can see that the second learning contracts artifact is going to be due on the weekend dated March the 12th. And the first learning contract will be due on the weekend dated April the 7th. Okay? So mark the calendar and so you know how to plan the app, how to produce the artifact you need. Your free weeks time to generate the artifacts for learning contract number two with your learning partner. Again, remember, you need to find another pair from a team. Okay? Start looking for your team pair, our team pair, before the end next week. Okay? We hope that you still you will have a team in the very last week of the second learning contract. Okay? So that you can have a very interesting interactions with our team members. So, it's not just one good exercise, it's, it's an exercise which is going to give you several wins to prepare. But if you do not make the best use of the time, then I'm going to give you the answer um, by this first day, which tells you something about project information literacy. Okay, uh, that is a very interesting step. If you want to know the answers to what student feels like, if you do not do things on time, you need some kind of wake-up call. And the wake-up call is already here on this particular link called Project Information Literacy. If you click on this link, I've given you several boxes here. And you can study those video. And I hope it's going to be another piece of refractive learning for you to get started with SRM. Now, starting on this first day, we're going to return back to the web technology stuff and I will hold you responsible for doing this because I cannot spend any extra time in class to elaborate on this, but on the topics we have. But definitely, if you have questions, you can ask me about the web security questions uh, online. Okay, allow me to take attendance for the day and then I'll let you go. Thank you very much for coming back. Okay, uh, Candy, right here. Thank you. Neo, thank you. Annie, thank you. Zi uh, Shen, Zi Shen, it's not here yet. Yeah. Uh, Tom, thank you. Connie, thank you. And then Sean, thank you. Luna, thank you. Uh, Jerry, thank you. Tammy, thank you. Francis, thank you. Very appreciate you having to come back. I know you're difficult. Thank you. Harden, Harden, not here yet. Joetta, thank you. Uh, Peter, thank you. Romina, thank you. Jennifer, thank you. Uh, Sheila, thank you. Larry, thank you. Kathy, Thank you. Alex, thank you. Ethan, thank you. So thank you very much for coming back to class today. I hope I'm not running too fast because I have to manage those material for you today. And I hope I can speak slower next time. And remember, I give you time to share class. Please sign up, okay? Now if you have any questions, you can, you can stay and ask me questions until 1 o'clock. All right, I have another student meeting at 1. Okay, if not, if you have to go, you're free to go, but you still have four minutes left. All right. Thank you very much for coming.
That's it for today, CISG114, thanks to one web technology at night. Until this first day, stay in tune.